said, O Brahmana lady, fortunately you have realized non-attachment on hearing the story of Shiva Purana. Do not be afraid. Seek refuge in Shiva. All sins perish instantly by Shiva's grace. I shall explain to you that great object attached to the glorification of Shiva, whereby your course hereafter will be pleasant always. It is by listening to the excellent story that your mind has now turned to the pure path of repentance and detachment from worldly pleasures. Repentance is the only way of acquittance for all sinners. Saintly men have extolled it as the only way of expiation for all sins. Purity can be realized by repentance alone. If a sinner expiates in the manner advised by Shastra, it removes all sins. After due expiation, one becomes free from fear. One undoubtedly attains salvation by repentance. The mental purity derived by hearing the story of Shiva Purana cannot be gained by any other means. As a mirror becomes free from dirt on being wiped with a cloth, so the mind is undoubtedly purified by listening to this story. Shiva stays in the minds of pure men, accompanied by Amba. The sanctified soul thereupon attains the region of Shiva and Amba. Hence, this story is the means of realizing the fourfold aims of life. It is for this purpose that Mahadev earnestly created this Purana. Listening to the story of Parvati's consort Shiva brings about steady contemplation. Contemplation leads to perfect knowledge, which certainly results in salvation. A person who listens to the story in this life, though he be unable to meditate, realizes meditation in the next birth, after which he realizes the goal of Shiva. Many repentant sinners have meditated upon Shiva after hearing this story and achieved salvation. Listening to this excellent story is the cause of beatitude for all men. Properly heard, it dispels the ailment of worldly bondage. Listening to the story of Shiva, constant meditations thereon, and repeated musings certainly purify the mind. That purity of mind leads the meditator to devotion for Mahesh and his sons Ganesh and Kartikeya. One undoubtedly attains liberation by their blessings. A person devoid of that devotion, with mind entangled in the bondage of ignorance, is a brute. He can never be liberated from worldly bondage. Hence, O Brahmana lady, Turn away from worldly pleasures. Listen to the sanctifying story of Shiva with devotion. As you listen to the excellent story of Shiva, your mind will become pure. Liberation is assured in this very birth to a person who meditates on the lotus-like feet of Shiva with a pure mind. This is the truth. Sutta said, After saying this, that excellent Brahmana, his mind melting with compassion, ceased talking and turned his attention to meditation on Shiva with purity of soul. Chanchala became delighted, her eyes brimming with tears. With great delight she fell at the Brahmana's feet. With her palms joined together she said, I am blessed. Afterwards she rose up with great enthusiasm. With her hands joined together, her words faltering in excitement, the woman of good intellect in her detached mood said to the Brahmana, the great devotee of Shiva, 
O great Brahmana, devotee of Shiva, you are blessed. You are endowed with the vision of truth. You are devoted to helping others. You are a great saint. O saintly one, I was about to fall into the ocean of hell. You saved me. I am now faithfully eager to listen to the Purana. On hearing its excellent story, I became detached from worldly pleasures. Sutta said, So saying reverently, she got the blessings of the Brahmana. Desirous of hearing the Purana, she stayed there, rendering service to him. The intelligent Brahmana devotee narrated the Puranic story to the woman on the spot. Thus she listened to the excellent story of Shiva Purana in that holy center from that excellent Brahmana. On hearing that excellent story that heightens devotion, detachment, and yields liberation, she became greatly blessed. Favored by the good preceptor, she quickly gained purity of mind. By the blessings of Shiva, she could meditate on Shiva's forms and features. Thus resorting to the good preceptor, her mind was drawn toward Shiva. She constantly meditated on the sentient blissful body of Shiva. She wore barks of trees and had her hair matted. She smeared Bhasma all over her body. She wore garlands of Rudraksha beads. Every day she took her ablutions in the sacred water. She regularly repeated Shiva's names. She regulated her speech and diet. She propitiated Lord Shiva in the manner advised by the preceptor. O Shonaka, thus for a long time Chanchala continued her meditation on Lord Shiva. When the stipulated period of his life was over, Chanchala, in her practice of the threefold devotion, cast off her body without any difficulty. A divine aerial chariot, shining in brilliant colors, sent by Tripurari himself, accompanied by his attendants, arrived there quickly. With her dirt and sin removed, she mounted the aerial chariot and was immediately taken to Shiva's city by the Lord's noble attendants. She assumed a divine form. Her limbs were divine in their features. She assumed a form like Gauri's with the crescent moon as her coronet and divine ornaments shining brilliantly. She saw the three-eyed Mahadev, the Eternal, being served devotedly by Vishnu, Brahma, and other gods. He had the brilliance of ten million suns. His neck had a blue hue. He had five faces, three eyes, the crescent moon as crest ornament. His left side was apportioned to Gauri, who had the brilliance of lightning. He was white as camphor in complexion and wore all ornaments. Besmeared with white ashes all over and clad in white cloth, he shone brilliantly. The woman Chanchala became highly delighted on seeing Shankara. In her flutter of delight, she bowed again and again to him. She joined her palms in reverence with great pleasure, love, and humility. In great delight, she shed tears of joy and had feelings of haripalation. By the Lord's sympathy, she was allowed to approach Parvati and Shankara, who gracefully looked at her. Chanchula, the beloved wife of Binduga, thus attained a divine form was blessed with divine pleasures and made a chaperone by Parvati. In that permanent abode of excellent bliss and sublime luster, she acquired a permanent residence and unobstructed pleasure.